Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be doing my makeup, something I have not done in quite a long time because of COVID. And I'm gonna be updating you on my life. Makeup talks, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm gonna apply a primer. The gist of it is in March, I packed a suitcase of two weeks worth of stuff and I drove from New York to, back to Ohio where my parents live and where I grew up and that was March like 20th and now it's August. Wow, what do I even do? What am I gonna, am I gonna put on eyeshadow? Came back here, um, I figured it's a lot safer to be somewhere where I don't have to take public transit and where I can get more groceries easily and where I can, you know, not just be alone in an apartment with just like me and my roommate. And then about a month ago, my lease was up in New York and I was originally, I was gonna renew it. I was like ready to roll, ready, ready to roll. I'm using a little, little shallot, the shallot, shadow palette. And then as the date got closer, I realized that America is not getting any better. Corona is still very much alive because dumb people won't wear masks and keep having parties and hanging out and acting like nothing's wrong. After talking to my parents and kind of weighing the pros and cons of going back to New York, um, the main pro being that I wouldn't be at home with my parents and I'd be in New York where I live and I love and I want to be forever. But all the cons being Expensive rent, nothing to do, you can't really leave your apartment, I wouldn't have a job there. Which made me come to the conclusion that I was better off staying in Ohio. I moved out of my apartment in two and a half days. I put a lot of my stuff in storage and only really brought home stuff that I needed, like clothes, makeup, a little like shadow pen. Very simple eye look, cause I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so I brought home clothes, makeup, some of my art supplies, some books, that kind of thing. Now I'm just in Ohio indefinitely. I'm currently babysitting, which is good because, you know, it's money and it's not too hard. I'm also working on this really cool virtual performance called Vonderstock. I'm probably saying it wrong. I always say it wrong. Vonderstock. 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 But it's really cool. I'll link it in the description. I've been working on my stand up with my stand up group, Women Stand Up. I love them so much. I've been writing each week together. I'm gonna give you some personal updates. Quarantine really sucks. As someone with mental illnesses, it's a hard time. I mean, obviously, it's hard for everyone, and I'm super grateful for the position I'm in in the quarantine. I have a house, I have a family that can support me, I have food in my fridge you know I have so much that a lot of people during this pandemic do not have so I recognize my privilege in that fact so grateful for it but that doesn't mean it's um that doesn't mean that I'm doing okay yeah I have depression and anxiety as well as an eating disorder and it has been hard it's just not it's kind of the worst time for somebody with a mental illness because all of your coping mechanisms all of the things that you find joy in are pretty much gone. I cope by doing things with my friends, by trying to do normal things in a normal routine. I cope by just, it's gonna sound bad, by pretending like it doesn't exist. It's good for me because it gives me a sense of normalcy and like a reason to get up in the morning and get out of bed. These are thick eyebrows. Yeah, I need to get them waxed, but I ain't doing that because that's not necessary. That's not essential. There's some concealer. And get this face going. I have so many pimples from masks. Anybody else breaking out like crazy just from wearing a mask? Which like you should wear a mask. Breaking out is the small price to pay to wear a mask and keep others safe and yourself safe. But I'm just saying that's like one downside. I've been struggling a lot because I can't see my friends. The majority of my friends are they met in New York through school and so they're either still in New York or they're with their families in various states and it's kind of like I might not see them for a year or so, maybe even more. And that's just hard. And I luckily am so grateful to have friends still in Ohio from when I grew up. So I've been seeing them socially distant, safe, whatever, which is wonderful, but it's really hard. And also just being stuck at home. Like I didn't always have this babysitting job. I was 
not working for up until like mid July. <laughs> so I've been very bored. I've been very depressed. I've watched way too many Netflix shows doing cross stitching, which I love and embroidery and lots of painting, which are also some of my coping mecha mechanisms or art. So that has been nice because I've really gotten time to do some crafting, which I haven't done. I started an Etsy shop. I haven't sold anything, but I'll link that below if you want to buy things. And food-wise and exercise-wise, it's hard. I'm lucky I have like a little home gym. We have a treadmill, a bunch of weights. Um, we just got, I'm very excited about this, we just got a barbell and a bench. But yeah, so I've been trying to work out like five-ish days a week because it's so good for my mental health as well as physical health, um, but I always feel so much better when I work out. Just those endorphins are like, they're real. Endorphins are real. I miss New York food. I miss the variety. I miss the quality. I don't miss the prices, but I miss everything else. But it's hard when you're sitting at home all day, um, even if you're working from home and you're not moving as much. Like in New York, I would walk at least 10,000 steps a day, sometimes 20,000 steps, depending on, you know, what I'm doing. In addition to working out and would eat, obviously. I'd have my meals, but I feel like I wouldn't snack as much. And not that snacking is bad. Snacking is totally fine and we're in a pandemic. Eat whatever the fuck you want. I'm all for that. It is hard because I want to still be a healthy human not in terms i don't care about being skinny i don't care about any of that but i want to be healthy inside so that you know i have a long fulfilling life I do feel myself retreating into some bad eating habits in terms of just eating mindlessly and not and because i'm only i'm sitting down and i'm bare, moving like 2,000 steps a day, it just, it isn't as good for you. So I'm trying to work on that, but it's hard when you had an eating disorder and your whole view on food is already skewed and messed up and there's foods that you can't eat and there's foods that are special foods and there's good foods and bad and it's already so bad. So I'm trying to not only work on that and still working on rewiring my mind when it comes to how I think about food and what's good and bad and eliminating that vocabulary completely because all food is good while also trying to recognize that like hey you can eat what you want but just also remember that like you have to take care of your body but that's again very hard to do when you're trying to combat disordered eating thoughts um but I'm planning on doing some cooking stuff some actual makeup tutorials that aren't just me talking at the camera uh, maybe some comedy stuff. Might bring some friends on Zoom to do some collabs. We'll see, let me know what you guys think. I'm just trying to find ways to be creative and have fun while in this quarantine because it looks like we're gonna be here for a while. This is for fun. Yeah, so basically, I think that's, that's the finished look. <laughs> Very just basic. Oh, you can see all my unpacked boxes behind me. So I'm gonna set this back down. But thank you, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this has been fun. <sighs> I don't know. Tell me how to do the YouTube again. Cause I forgot and when I first did it, I wasn't even that good. <laughs> Bye, thanks for watching.